I don't see it as that a collaborative way of working adds value. I think it's actually critical to delivering effective palliative end of life care across the city. It's the, the very substance of, of, of the care. People require care across multiple settings. They may need care in a hospital setting, they may need care in their own home or a care home, they may need to go into a hospice inpatient unit at some point. And it's critical that actually we all know what each of the other is doing, we all have access to information, we're all using the same concepts, the same initiatives. The other obvious benefit of collaboration is actually you're getting that range of views and perspectives from different disciplines, clinicians working in different settings, uh, people who may have ideas that are different to yours or focus that's different to yours. And actually that, that productive, constructive challenge is actually what leads to more innovative ways of working. And, um, and in terms of the LPCN structure, that does allocate specific individuals specific time to try and facilitate that collaboration. And so the, the, the additional benefit of having a structure like the Leeds Palliative Care Network is you've got a framework, you've got a model of support that actually enables particularly clinicians to, to work together and do what they do well. There was already a strong legacy of, of partnership working between palliative and end-of-life care providers and of innovation amongst all the partners. So in fact, if, if there is an initial lesson, it's if you've already got that strong culture, you need to build on it. I think in, in terms of collaboration, I think the first thing you need to do to make that successful is to put the patient and the people close to that person at the core of everything you as a collaborative are trying to achieve. Because if you've got that as your focus, in, in many ways, everything else falls around it. Services should be organised around the people who need those services rather than vice versa, but you need to make that an explicit part of the way you're working. One of the other lessons is, is how you actually navigate all the different organisational structures and goals in order to create a kind of joined up uh, and unified sort of ethos and approach. In the experience of the LPC, and that's a kind of critical thing to work on and, and to maintain as you move forward. Structures around you, so NHS commissioning structures, for example, may change so that actually you've got a network of strong relationships with people who are still in, in various posts um, to build on as well. Yeah, I think that the, the critical bit for progressing for the future would be actually having a more robust approach to co-creation and co-design of initiatives uh, with the people who need care and treatment and the people close to them. So actually it is tailored to their needs as effectively as possible. And it feels at the moment where we're starting to explore how to do that and understand how to do that. But actually that just needs to become part of business as usual because in some ways they're, they're the most critical partner in all this collaborative working. 